يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم كتابه بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين عمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لألكم تتكون صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق الرسول النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين صلوات على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد First of all we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this great opportunity the day of Juma'a, which is weekly Eid, and more importantly, in the month of Sha'ban, the month of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which also happens to be the month before the month of Ramadan. So today, I would like to talk about Ramadan and the importance of Ramadan. And that is why I started with the verse of the Holy Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah verse 183 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to believing men and women and he says to them that kutiba alaykum as-siyam kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattakun that Allah Almighty has prescribed for you fasting like the way he prescribed for the people before you in other words, we are not the only humans that God created or pre prescribed for us fasting. But now the question is, what does fasting does in our lives? Why do we need fasting? Is fasting something that is sweet? And if it is sweet, what makes it sweet? And if fasting is not sweet, what makes it not to be sweet? So fasting can be looked at in different angle altogether. If we see fasting to be punishment, simply because we are told not to eat from dawn until sunset, and we yearn and we are eager to eat because we don't want to keep ourselves hungry, then of course, fasting in that aspect will reflect the difficulties, and nobody wants difficulties. So if a person has that, that kind of mentality, his attitude and approach towards fasting will be something that is difficult. And as a result of that, it becomes difficult for that person to be able to prepare properly in welcoming the month of Ramadan. Another understanding of Ramadan is that People look beyond just, you know, the empty stomach from the morning or from, you know, uh, early hours of the morning until the sunset. And they enjoy that, you know, loneliness of being closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They loin that. They have that appetite. They see that we are in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, they don't pay attention to the food that they didn't eat because they enjoy something that is more important than the food they don't eat. So, the first group of people who see fasting to be difficult, they don't enjoy the exact benefit of the month of Ramadan. But you see the second group of people, they are the ones who understand the essence of Ramadan. They are the ones who enjoy the essence of spirituality. They are the ones who enjoy and understand that by staying away from food and having that closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are feeding their spirituality. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that verse the last part of it, he says, La Allakum Tatakun. He said, So that you may have a piety in Allah. Your heart will be clean. 
you will have that sincerity and serenity within you towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once a person has that sincerity towards Allah, automatically his relationship with the other people becomes, you know, a good relationship. Relationship of love, relationship of empathy, relationship of togetherness. Why? Because that person's heart is pure and clean. And therefore, month of Ramadan is a month that when we understand it properly, it will build us, it will transform us, it will enhance our inner being, it will elevate us towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Umma salli ala Muhammad wa ala. The Lord's Juma he performed before the month of Ramadan. He advised the humanity. Some of the advice he gave to us, one of a very beautiful statement he made. He said, And this is very, very important. He says, Allah calls us as a humanity to come to the presence of Allah and we are the honorable guest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine you being a guest of Allah. You know, sometimes to be a guest of even a respected human being, look at how you feel about it. When you are told that even the minister or the mayor of, you know, um, Swani wants to meet you, look at how you feel. You will ask, where am I going to meet him? They said, no, he said, you must come to the office. Look at how you feel when you are about to enter into that office. You feel honored. You feel respected. You go there with a clean cloth. You go there with open heartedness because you respect his position as he is the mayor of, you know, um, what do you call it? Swani uh, Metropolitan Assembly or whatever we call it. But in the month of Ramadan, you are just you are not just the guest of the mayor, but you are the guest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, Anfasukum fihi tasbih. He said, even your breathing in and out in the month of Ramadan, it contains glorification to Allah. When you breathe in, it glorifies Allah. You breathe out, it glorifies Allah. Allah says, وَنَوْمُكُمْ فِيهِ ibada." Even you sleeping at night or even during the day in the month of Ramadan, Allah said, He understands glorification in your sleep. So month of Ramadan, when we approach it from the aspect of having that nearness towards Allah, that is what cleans us. That is what gives us the real essence of our existence. Because look at the 12th month. Allah has permitted us to eat throughout all these 11 months. And this month alone, Allah not only wanting us to have nearness, and also to understand the pain of people who do not have us, we do, to be able to eat three times a day. Allah wants us to reflect on this. That is why Allah has given a lot of importance to the month of Ramadan. In one of the du'as that is recommended in the month of Ramadan, we are told by Ahl al-Bayt alayhim ala fi tahiyyatu wa salama, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. That once we are there in Ramadan, we are just by the entrance of the door to the might of Allah subhanahu. He says, Ilahi, wakafasailuna bibak. Said, Oh Allah, those who are needy, those who are asking, those who understand that they are your servant, they are just there by your entrance. Wakafasailuna bibak. He says, Wala dal fukarau bi janabik. Allah baik. He said, you see, have not. They enjoy the company they have with you, O oh God. Those who do not have, and who do we think he have not? 
We shouldn't think that there is somebody who has some them. No. All those who understand the Ramadan and they want to benefit from Ramadan, they stay away from food. They wake up at night to glorify Allah. All of them, they are classified as those who have not because we have not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it came to dua, Allah says that we should call on him. Call on me and I will respond. Immediately he said, You see, those who don't want to call on me, Allah used the word istikbar. Istikbar means those that are arrogant. Arrogant being somebody who does not see anything. He only admire himself. He elevate himself. He thinks that every good that has come to him, it is through his effort. Allah says, Inna ladina yastakbiruna an Those are the arrogant ones. Because they don't see that everything they have is as a result of Allah. They don't appreciate the mercies, the blessings of Allah that He gave it to them, and as a result, they have what they have. So Allah classified those people that they have that takabur, they have that arrogance in them. So in this dua of Shah Ramadan, he says, Wala the lufukara ubi And have not enjoy the company they have with you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the ones in the month of Ramadan. They are so excited. They don't want the days and then the night of the Ramadan to pass by. They want to make a maximum use of the month of Ramadan. You see, month of Ramadan is like a rainfall. When the rain falls, how do you want to collect the rain? It depends on the amount of containers you have. Because you don't have a container that can collect all the entire rainfall. So if you have 20 barrels, then you are able to collect 20 barrels of rainfall. If you have 100 barrels, you are able to collect 100 barrels of rainfall. The same way if you have one barrel, you will collect one barrel of rainfall. But it doesn't mean that the entire rainfall is what you have collected. So the more you have more barrels, the more you collect a lot amount of rainfall. So those who have a lot of barrels and this rainfall of Ramadan, they want to make good use of it as much as they can. And therefore, whatever they do, they don't go beyond, you know, whatever that is prescribed for them to do in the month of Ramadan. Even while they are at work, they are busy glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While they are walking on the streets, they, busy, they are busy glorifying Allah. They will never set their foot where it is not allowed in the month of Ramadan. Neither will they look at something that is forbidden to be looked at in the month of Ramadan. Or they will listen to something that is forbidden to listen to in the month of Ramadan. Because They are enjoying the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the month of Ramadan is something that it needs preparation, my respected brothers. And we shouldn't take month of Ramadan like all the other months. No, month of Ramadan is unique. Month of Ramadan is special. The food in month of Ramadan alone can feed your soul for more than 80 years of your life. And the Quran mentions. Allah says, Laylatul Qadr khayrum min al fishar. He said, The rain, the blessings in the night, one night in the month of Ramadan, we call it Laylatul Qadr. He said, The blessings in that month, that night alone is more than thousand nights. If you calculate thousand nights, thousand nights is roughly plus minus 80 years of your life. Not 80 years of your life while eating and sleeping. 80 years of life that every minute and second of that life is glorifying Allah. That is what you accumulate in just one night in the month of Qadr. So the month of you know, Ramadan is a month that we cannot encompass all the blessings. And therefore, our preparation will determine 
as to how much of the blessings we are going to have in the month of Ramadan. We pray that Allah will give us that foresight so that we can prepare ourselves, so that we can understand what Ramadan has for us. You see, our biggest mistake is that we don't understand the Ramadan. We don't know what is at stake in the month of Ramadan. We don't know the impact and the effect of Ramadan in our lives. And therefore, we take a month of Ramadan like any other month. No, that is completely wrong. You know, we always want to eat good food. We always want to eat, you know, balanced diets. We don't want to be eating one thing over and over again. Why do we do that? Why do we crave for all that? Why do you crave for the exact food you want? You want food that is so nice. It's because you know the nourishment and the joy that food will bring to you. You know, when somebody invites you for a dinner, you ask him, which restaurant are you taking me to? When he asks you, choose the kind of restaurant you choose the best res restaurants of your own choice because to you going there and eating there nourishes you and it makes you happy i'm telling you there is no restaurant that can nourish your soul like the month of ramadan that is why prophet said the month of rajab is the month of allah this month of shaaban is the month of the prophet and the Ramadan is the month of the Ummah of the Prophet. Because it is the month in which our beloved Prophet says, it bends our sons away. It is the month, immediately after the month, we come out of it as if we are born today. Because all our sins, if we know exactly how to make use of that month, all of those sins are removed away from us. And therefore, my respected brothers, we are lucky to be alive today and are anticipating the month of Ramadan. Ramadan is coming to us no matter what. The most important thing is our preparation towards the month of Ramadan. How prepared are we? And that is what will determine the amount of energy, the amount of blessings, the amount of nourishment we are going to have out of the month of Ramadan. So we ask subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our ibadat, insha'Allah. We ask subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us to be able to accumulate more and more blessings of the month of Ramadan, insha'Allah. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the sins we've committed in our lives, the ones we are aware of, the ones we do not know, we ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and bend them away from us, insha'Allah. In my second talk, I want to refer to another dua in the month of Ramadan. You see, in the month of Ramadan, there is this dua, we call it dua al iftita. There are some lines that I want to refer to them to tell us the significance and the importance of the month of Ramadan. Especially for those who know. For those who do not see Ramadan as pain and difficulties. There are some people in the month of Ramadan because they know when you travel in the month of Ramadan, you don't fast. So they reserve all their travels in the month of Ramadan just to have the excuse of not fasting. It's because for them, Ramadan is some sort of a hardship, hardships and difficulties on them. And this dua, this dua if 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 there's a part that says that, Allah says, Imam taught us this. He says, Oh Allah, you call on me and I turn my back towards you. It's like somebody wants to give you millions of runs. And he says to you, Hey, my brother, come. Come get millions. And you turn your back against him. Said, no, please come. I want to help you. I know your problem is you need 10 million rand. So come, there is it on a silver platter. Come and take it. Then you turn your back towards that person. So that is how the month of Ramadan is. 
It says, إِنَّكَ تَدْعُنِي فَأُوَلِّي أَنْكَ It says, وَتَتَحَبَّبُ إِلَيَّا وَأَتَبَقَّضُ إِلَيْكَ Allahu Akbar You see, when you see your loved one, imagine somebody that you love, and for some time you didn't see the person, and immediately you set your eyes on that person. Look at how you go with smile and open-heartedness. You want to welcome that person. You show the person love. Allah says, I show you that kind of love. And you frown your face towards me. Allah used the month of Ramadan to show you that love. But instead of you to understand that enormous, that those abundant love of Allah, what do you do? You frown your face towards Allah. How do you frown your face? If we don't adhere to his teachings, if we don't prepare ourselves enough, if we see that Ramadan is difficulties, you know, we don't want this Ramadan. Hi, this Ramadan, I'm not going to be going to the, my favorite restaurant. You are frowning on Allah. Allah says, إِنَّكَ تَدْعُونِ فَأُوَلِّي أَنْكَ then you are showing me your anger. You don't want to come to me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, eh, Imam says that. He said, You know, Allah shows you a lover that He expects you to show Him love. To show him a reciprocal love. But unfortunately, you show Allah your anger. Imam says, He said, It's like Allah needs something from you. Is there anything that Allah needs from us? <laughs> Allah, everything He wants. He can do it even if he wants to kill us. Who can say no to it? But the way we are frowning and turning our back to Allah is like if you need something from someone and you go and you are pleading and the person is walking about and you try to follow him. Because you need what he has. But what does Allah need from you and I? Allah needs completely nothing. Allah needs nothing. But look at what Imam said. فَلَمْ يَمْنَعَكَ ذَلِكَ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ لِي وَلِإِحْسَانِ إِلَيَّ He said, upon all these that we show Allah, He never stopped His blessings from showering on us. We are, we are frowning. We are showing Him all this enmity. He calls us. We don't listen. But still, He comes and He gives us what we want. He gives you for Mahal. He doesn't pay back the way you frown. Here in this world, if you do something to me and tomorrow you come, you think I'm going to laugh with you, I will also retain the same fire. But to Allah, it's not like that. Upon all what we do, what does he do? He says, no problem, my son, I will give you thus. I will sustain you. I will give you thus. I will make you do thus. I will make upon all what we do. Imam says, وَتَفَضُّلَ عَلَيَّ بِجُودِكَ وَكَرْمِ Upon all this, Allah strive for us. He strive for us. He shows us His karama. He shows us His unlimited power and His unlimited mercy. And therefore, all these are what is expected from you. Instead of us frowning, frowning towards Allah, we need to have that reciprocal love. And reciprocal love is what? For us to listen to him, to be with him, to follow his steps. And whatever he says to us, we just need to stop and listen to what he says to us. Not only listen, and also to follow his orders and whatever. That is what is going to give us the food the soul needs. The food that is going to elevate us. The food that is going to remove us out of pain. The food that is going to bring us closer to Allah. The food that is going to make us to be honored and to be dignified in the presence of Allah. Without this food, my brother, forget it. 
everything we fight for in this dunya, eventually it will come to naught. It is us who think that to live for 80 years is something that is so great. But your 80 years of life, when it is condensed and we want to take quality out of that 80 years, if you are not the follower of Allah, you see that more than 99.5% of your life will be useless. The quality of the life is going to be just, you know, 0.5%. Sometimes you can live for just 30 years. But the quality of that life is more than 90%. And how does your life become quality to that extent? It is when our life is for the sake of Allah. When Allah gives us chances like Ramadan. You see, Ramadan is like a bonus. You work every month, they pay you. But on in December, or when it is your birthday, they multiply the money that they pay you. If you get 10,000, they give you 20,000. Ramadan is more than the 20,000. If you get 10,000, Ramadan is a hundred thousand that has been added to that 10,000 for us. Because that is what brings out the quality of life in us. That is what burns out all the negative life out of us. And as a result, it brings out those quality life. So please, take this Ramadan as if it is your last Ramadan in this dunya. Take it as if you will never have the opportunity to fast in any Ramadan. And make it a point that this Ramadan is like you are going to write a final exam. That when you pass, you are going to get something that is your heart desire. And I'm telling you, if you take this Ramadan like that, you will never and ever regret in your life. And if, even after your life of this material so we ask subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us that foresight and to understand this significance and to understand that love Allah has for us and to understand how deep the love of Allah is for us. Look, in conclusion, let me just bring this in. You see, there is a companion of the Prophet by the name Jafar, Jafar ibn Abi Talib. Jafar ibn Abi Talib, when Prophet started his mission in Mecca, life was very difficult at that time. So the people of Mecca eventually decided to kill him. And, uh, you know, before even they came to killing him, they exiled him until he stayed in the farm of his uncle with his follow, uh, few followers. Until eventually he has to ask some of the followers to migrate from Mecca to a place called Abyssinia, which is Ethiopia today. So when they migrated, there is something that took place I just want to mention to you. When these people migrated to Abyssinia, the leaders of Mecca were not satisfied. They said, no, let's go and bring them and come and punish them and kill those we have to kill. So they took they sent some soldiers to go to Ethiopia to go and bring these people who were the followers of the prophet. When they went, the, the, the leader of, uh, the king of Ethiopia was then a Christian. So this Christian, he asked them, what do you want? He said, no, we were sent to come and take these people. Why do you want to take them? He said, no, because they insulted our gods, because they used to worship idols there in Mecca. So he said, these people insulted our gods. And then they invoke the anger of our God. And our leaders are angry. And therefore we were sent to come and take them back. And then the king asked these people, the Muslims, who was led by this uh, Jafar ibn Abi Talib, said, Jafar, what happened? What, tell me, what is the story? Listen to what Jafar said. Jafar said, Ayyuhal Malik, said, Oh, you the king. He said, we were, you know, ignorant. We were a community of ignorant people. He says, we worship idols. And we used to eat dead animals. Animals that are not slaughtered in Islamic, Islamic, uh, in Islamic way. He said, we no see ujiwa. And we used to violate the right of our neighbors. 
If my neighbor has something and I want and I'm strong, I just go and I take from him. I show him my knife or my gun or my sword. I take it from him. He says, وَيَأَكُلْ كَوِيُّ مِنْ نَضَّعِفِ And those who were strong always oppress the weak ones. Or they eat the belongings of weak ones. He said, هَكَذَا كُنَّا حَتَّى بَعْثَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْنَا He said, this was the kind of life we were living. Until Allah sent to us Rasul and a messenger said, Na'arifu nasabahu We know his lineage Wa ifatahu And we know how humble and how nice he was Okay Just to end here Jafar said that they were in the pagan era Okay So now Prophet came And he brought to them life he gave them a new life. A life that made them to be human beings. In other words, Jafar told the king that, look, we were animals and prophet brought to us life. We became human beings. As soon as he said that, the king told them that, look, you people go back. What he is saying is exactly what my um, Jesus said, because that king was a Christian. And therefore the path they are on is the same path as myself. And that is the right path. And you guys are wrong. And therefore, I'm, going to, I'm not going to allow you to take them away. Okay. So, why did I bring this story? You know, sometimes you are living, but you are dead. Until you will have a new life. Like now, before Ramadan, some of us are dead. And Ramadan is what is going to give us new life. And that is why it's important for us to prepare ourselves adequately enough for us to enjoy and to take as much as we can the blessings of this month of Ramadan, insha'Allah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna Allah malaikatahu sallu ma'ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad.